What's up, y'all? Welcome back, everyone. Happy Monday to y'all. Thank you so much for hanging out with us on this Monday night on the Call to Action channel with Chill to Action here every Monday. Thank you so much. This is a show where we interview Schmodown personalities. So once again, thank you to everyone inside of the chat. Y'all know me. It's your girl, Danny Joy, hanging out with my favorite co-host, Mr. Paul Denuvio. It's me. It's me. It's PLD, and I am switching out my Jack and James, Jack or Jameson for a nice cold Coors Light tonight. <laughs> Oh, yeah, that's how we do it on Chill. And also with us tonight, returning one of our favorite co hosts, as usual, Mr. Billy Belford. That's right, gang. It's not Chill to Action, it's Bill to Action, because I'm only here for the good episodes. And tonight, <laughs> as always, we have a good one. You may have seen him on Lights Out with David Spade, you may have seen him on The Ringer with Bill Burr, you may have seen him on his comedy special, Doug Stepfather. But let's be honest, you've probably just seen him on the Wangers. Uh, <laughs> he is the world record holder of identifying Van Halen songs in under a minute at 19 songs, wow. Mr. Mark Ellis. Hello, kids. Good to be with everyone. I totally agree with Danny in the chat who says, I am here for Paul's mustache. If you've <laughs> never seen it in person, it is a sight to behold. It is an honor to be here with all of you. Uh, Paul, great to see you. Uh, oh. President Belfort from his bunker in Camp David, it's an honor to be with you. And especially Danny, Danielle, I'll call you whatever you want. How are you kids? Uh, Woo! Thank you so much great. for hanging out with us tonight, Mark. On a Monday, as usual, with the Childa Action crew. Now for everyone inside of the chat, Paul already spoiled it, but as usual, y'all know that I usually have my White Claw with me. But tonight, for this very special episode, I am cracking open that Coors. <laughs> that's like a Texas size Coors Light, too. It, that's it, good. It's <laughs> <laughs> actually, actually just a normal size can. It's just Danny's really small. <laughs> That's very true. Actually. Well, that's the thing. I have my like, little tiny lunchable hand model hands, and so <laughs> anytime I pick up like, a normal twelve ounce can, it looks huge. But I, I appreciate the support, y'all. Sorry, I'm just I'm being boring. I got some some lemon water tonight. I'm trying to trying to rehydrate from the weekend I just had. Yeah, well, we've really got the same water also. <laughs> Alex, We're not there, yeah. Yeah. Alex is not liking the white claw thing. I said the abandoning the Sorry. white claw thing, but that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's what we also Danny is all. Thanks, y'all. Well, Mark, coming <laughs> in and hanging out with us on Chill to Action, we really do appreciate it. As usual, we're gonna jump right in here. We always like to ask the same question on Chill to Action, and we kind of know the story, but I'd like to get your half of this story. Why Schmodown? How did you start this whole thing that we all love that built this community that brought us all here tonight? Well, I love that question because it allows me to take full credit for the Schmodown. <laughs> I, totally I do all the storylines. I write all the questions. It's actually me announcing. I just deep fake Christian onto my body. <laughs> smash. It's all my thing. <laughs> totally buy that. It really is. It's, it's so much uh, uh, the credit goes to Christian and really to the production crew that's behind the scenes. I'm just I'm lucky enough to have been in the right place at the right time. And that place was uh, the pizza joint in Anaheim that is so famous for being the birthplace of the Schmodown that neither Christian and I can remember where exactly <laughs> it is. At some point, you know, Star Wars Celebration is in Anaheim this this coming summer. So I think maybe him and I would go down there a day early and just walk around a different pizza joint and see if we can find <laughs> the birthplace of the Schmodown. Um, <laughs> because it really was that simple. It was just we're, we're, it was back when we were doing Schmozno, uh, was in phase five, I believe, at, after, but maybe we were still at Toad Hop. Maybe we were still at phase three. And we were just talking about the different, you know, cast of characters that we had brought in and what like a fun game to play with everybody would be because by that point uh finstock had already proposed to everybody he could so <laughs> we needed some new material and we just started talking about movie trivia and one thing led to another we started seeding it and doing like the march madness style brackets and it just exploded from there and then when christian had the concept to make it its own thing i naturally was like that's not gonna work <laughs> End up to what six seven years later i'm on a show talking about the schmodown and i'm with three of the greatest schmodown fans in the world so this is it, it's an honor to be with you i really appreciate everything you guys do for the show by the way oh 
Thank you. And that's all call to action. You guys, I think there's like 700 of you. There's like a, yeah. Yeah. Like, yes. it, you guys are your own little community and it's a big community now. And we cannot do any of this stuff without the support of y'all. So everybody at call to action, I cannot tell you guys how awesome it is to see y'all in person at the live events, at the comedy shows, everywhere in between you guys rock and, and you make the show what it is. Thank you. But also, I will say, it brings up the next question there. We're talking about the live events. They've become such an integral part of this showdown now, obviously. And also, now is how we pairing your stand up shows the night before. Uh, is there a difference now between you know, you, now you've done stand up tours, like between the showdown audience and like maybe you see our regular audience? You've done like see Billy Saw in Washington, for example. Is there a big difference between those, uh, those audiences, those crowds? There is a slight difference when it's a Schmodown weekend. Um, I think that, that it, 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 it's not that big of a difference anymore from like a normal stand-up show when I'm touring than it is to uh, one bef the night before Schmodown, simply because so many of, of my fans have come from the Schmodown. And so that naturally is where, like, you know, after we're talking at the, you know, the meet and greet afterwards, that's where a lot of the, the questions arise. But there is, to Paul's point, like, there's a specific kind of energy that you can't replicate where it's the night before Schmodown. And I think it, in part is because fans showing up to the comedy show know that I, they're there to see me, hopefully, but they probably are going to bump into some people in the crowd that are maybe performing or are in the crew or doing something the next night. So I think that even before the show actually begins, the seat is planted that this is like a Schmodown centric event. So it's, it just, it, it kind of ratchets up the intensity. It's funny because it's actually happened a few times where uh, in New York, where like we'll be at the comedy, uh, um, the waiting in line at the comedy show and somebody who, who doesn't, like, they just got tickets to the comedy show. They didn't know anybody on the bill. And they're like, oh, who's this guy? And then all of a sudden, you know, here's 20 Schmodown fans. Like, let me tell you about this guy. Like, it's like <laughs> full bio of Mark Ellis. <laughs> Very true. And there is a plot in place to, to have your picture on the wall there. We're working on it. We're going to get it one way or another. Your, your face will be on the wall there. <laughs> Hey, keep it in the man. And like, it usually it, it's funny because I hear the story from like, because I, I have a lot of family that's in New Jersey and around uh, the Philly area. So if they come up to a small comedy club in New York to see me, they're like, they're sandwiched in the middle of a bunch of Schmodown. <laughs> so like one of them always is like, we should tell everyone who we are. And the other one is like, oh, don't tell them. Don't tell them. <laughs> so, uh, they, they really get to see what this thing is. And that's, that's the most fun part about it for me, because like, it, it's awesome to be able to make a living doing stand up and all that stuff. But when you can take, like your family and and not just let them see you like on online or on a TV show when you can actually put them in the middle of what this thing is and let them experience it. My uncle put it best because uh, my uncle is married uh, to a Brazilian woman and she took him to a soccer game in Brazil. And he was like, it was the craziest thing I've ever seen. I didn't understand anything that was happening on the field, but it was great. <laughs> so, my my same uncle in New York, he went to the Brooklyn event and he's like, it was exactly like going to a Brazilian soccer game. <laughs> I didn't know what the hell was going on on stage, but I had a great time. Never would have put the two together. chanting, <laughs> throwing mm -hmm. things, you know. Yeah, like, well, what, what are these chanting that mean? Are they speaking English? What is this? <laughs> Why are they chanting? What is Meryl Strong? Street? Why are they chanting <laughs> Strong? <laughs> <laughs> oh man, yeah, Mark. So you've been a part of the Schmodown <laughs> from the very beginning of it, and this game has progressed and changed in so many ways. Is there anything particular that you've seen change within the game that you've noticed the most? Uh, what What's really cool is to see this this wave of people who started out as fans of the show that are now some of the top competitors on it. You know, because like the, the first few seasons, it was people who were already in the Schmoes No universe who were regular personalities on the show or as other people from uh, the, U the world of YouTube or movie reviews or television, whatever. And now it's like, no, these people were like in college or they were at home and they were watching the show and they got involved in a fan community or a fan league. And then they kind of progressed and one thing led to another or some sort of magic happened and they were able to get into the league and prove themselves. And I think that what that's done is forced everyone in the league to actually have to prepare for matches in a way that is far and beyond what I ever thought anybody would put into this match, you know, into these games, because like, 
like when, when we were all competing, it was just show up. And if you know it, you know it. If you don't, you don't. There was, <laughs> there was no study involved. You know, I, I'm proud to say I've never done really homework in my life. And I wasn't the <laughs> <part of smoking. laughs> But now, like, you know, these, these these competitors show up to the studio with these Bibles. And <laughs> like, call them Bibles as an insult to them because it's just, they're, they're so massive texts that, that have every movie question you could possibly throw at someone and they're studying it right up before a match. Like they got their headphones in and because they recorded movie facts and they're listening to it. And it's just, it's insane how much preparation goes into it from the competitor standpoint. Oh, I've seen, we've seen the binder of Ben Bateman and it's something to behold. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> it's not, what's really kind of disheartening about it is that their binders for studying movie trivia are so much thicker than my joke books for writing jokes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that just means I'm good at my job or I'm terrible at my job. <laughs> it's funny, uh, Mike Kalinowski like tweeted a picture of his one of his study guides, and I tweeted back at him. I was like, Kalinowski's the kind of guy who would make a fake book to then take a, a photo with to give fake information to people so that they would like try to get information from his Twitter. And he was like, what makes you think I haven't already done that? And I was like, yep. <laughs> Probably See, that's the one thing that I might do. I might get a book that like is so thick that it has literally nothing written in it except the first page and the last page and just make everybody think that I'm studying this tome <laughs> when, in fact, I'm not. Like, you know, I'm just walking around just trying to make it look like I'm keeping up with everybody else. Oh, you should definitely, like, do it just to freak people out. Because, like, people like Roka and Kalinowski would freak out that you're coming back. That you're making <laughs> it come back. Like, you haven't played in two years, but he's, gonna, he's coming back. I got to get ready. <laughs> that would be my big comeback would be I would announce I'm coming back, that I'm, I'm retiring from stand-up until my next match. And I go away for like three months. I don't announce anything. I don't, you don't see me on anything. I don't post on social media except pictures of me studying. <laughs> a big then I, come back, I, I haven't prepared one day. Just faking, watching movies on Twitter, just posting movies that you don't even watch at all just to psych everyone out. Just make a letterbox and just load fake movies in there. <laughs> People are doing that now. They actually have talked about like having fake letterbox accounts just to like fool people to think that's what they've seen. That's how in depth they've gotten at this point. You know what would actually be great? A great because I'm not an April Fool's guy at all, so I can give this away for free because I'll never do it because I hate <laughs> pranks. But on April Fool's Day, I could be playing someone, like say I'm coming back and have them give me all the answers and get <laughs> everything right, have a perfect game. <laughs> and, then, and then at the end, say April Fool's. And if I'm playing, whoever I'm playing is going to blow a gasket. Oh, oh, I was going to say, Roker Kalinowski, the ones who got to do it again. Yeah. <laughs> They wouldn't know what to do. <laughs> so, Mark, I kind of want to talk to you about your stand-up career. Um, I watched an interview that you did with Argus Hamilton. Yeah. Yeah. And um, it said, and we've heard before that, you know, the comedy store has been a place that has been sacred to you and all of that stuff. I did not know that you were a door guy for mm -hmm. the comedy store. So did you ever have to do any serious bouncing while you were there? Did you, did you ever have to kick anyone out for heckling? I had to kick a fair number of people out. Yeah, you, you got to do a little bit of everything when you're an employee there. So when I moved to L.A. to do stand up, I started out doing the open mic at the comedy store. And you separate yourself pretty quickly, not in terms of like how good you are on stage, but just there's a small pocket of people who aren't like batshit nuts that show up to do it. And from that pocket, from that pool of people, occasionally a few of them can get picked to like become employees of the comedy store. Because pretty much when you go to the comedy store, everybody working there is a up and coming comedian. Nice. And so I got hired there. My first job was working the phones during the day. So I had the phone shift because Mitzi Shore uh, liked my voice and she liked me selling on the phone. And then I started doing the uh, the parking lot, um, the back, like working the back door, working the front door, which is seating people. Uh, being in the ticket booth. So you pretty much do any job. You you clean the toilets. Um, somebody throws up, you got to go clean that up. Somebody gets rowdy, you got to kick them out of the show. You learn how to do everything as a comedy club employee. And then in between that, you kind of learn what you're doing on stage. Nice. 
yeah, yeah, it's a great, great training ground. And and Argus, um, who who did that interview, is like he's he's an old school comedy store alum. He got there in the seventies, and he's still there today. And he still writes as much as any of us. And it's just he he's he. Pretty much any TV show that's like a history of the comedy store, he's driving the show. He's the one that is telling you everything that happened because he saw it all happen firsthand. He he was buddies with everyone. He saw when Richard Pryor came to the comedy store for the first time, when Robin Williams came to the comedy store for the first time. He was he was running with all these guys. And Argus used to host the Tonight Show when Johnny Carson was out. He hosted it more than anybody else when Johnny was not there. And he was kind of in line to take over the Tonight Show, but he had some personal issues and then Jay Leno started to really pop and Letterman started to pop on late night. And so it was really between those two, but yeah, I mean, Argus is, uh, it's just, it's really cool to have like a living history of the comedy store be your friend. Yeah. And he's super into history in general. Also, that was a big part of the interview that I watched. Is he actually related to Alexander Hamilton? Uh, you know what? I don't know if he's not, I, I know he's not, I might be. Because my <laughs> mother's maiden name is Hamilton, so we like we tried to trace it back, and I'm not sure, probably not. But here's the crazy thing: is that uh, if if my mom's side of the family is somehow distant related to Alexander Hamilton, the street that I grew up on is named for the guy who was the lawyer of Aaron Burr in the trial when Aaron Burr and Alexander Hamilton had a duel and shot each other. So, so you I guess have to be. I guess Aaron Burr shot Alexander Hamilton. Hamilton didn't really get a shot. <laughs> Ham Hamilton did shoot. He uh, he shot over Aaron Burr's head. That's true. He went over the head. Okay. He was oh, yeah. too high. Yeah. Which is what they thought Aaron Burr was also trying to do, and they think he had a faulty gun. I didn't uh, know that, actually. Could be. I mean, what I've always heard is that Aaron Burr had a little buzzer on his shoulder that would go off. It's like in the – it's like in this shirt, I think is where it was. Like, like right there. <laughs> it's like old tiny contraption. Like it was very Flintstones. There was like a parrot that would hit the buzzer. <laughs> like bang on water barrels, maybe. Like. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my gosh. That will never happen in the Schmodown. I would guarantee there's never gonna be a cheating scandal like that in the Schmodown. I guarantee you. That. So we can rip off Ben Bateman's shirt or something if he wins, kind of thing. That's not gonna be an issue. <laughs> That would be so funny if after a big win, somebody's like, don't rip my shirt off. Don't rip my shirt off. It's a bad time to have It doesn't close all the way because Bateman doesn't wear suits to fit. <laughs> I mean, y'all, I, I, I can't. Have y'all been to a studio match? I have not. No, unfortunately. Oh, we got to get y'all out here. It's it, it's so much fun, but it's also like, because just the way it's positioned is like the, the answer desk where I'm announcing um, is usually to my left is where the audience, the studio audience is. So on any given day, we'll have, you know, 25 to 50, sometimes more audience members in there. But I position my, my laptop. I trust everybody, but I don't trust anyone that much. So I position <laughs> my laptop just a little bit, just in case there's any sort of like, you know, hand signals going on so I, I, make, I make sure the nobody can uh can, can rig our our sweet little game it's good to hear that that's the integral part we all know of the integrity so but i wanted to actually bring up because you mentioned the the uh the comedy store being such a sacred ground to you uh, we heard the stories from christian how you got the, the award show and you were maybe a little worried about uh how everything was going to go down uh how was the aftermath of that? Was everything okay? Did they uh, everybody clear up well for you? Every, everything was great, and and I I hesitate to say it, but this year was a lot smoother than last year, um, just because last year was the first year we had done it. Maybe I was a little more calm, but I was I was particularly nervous about this year because it was the awards and the draft, and you just you don't know how people are going to react. You know, we've 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 heard a lot of stories that have come out since then about people feeling like they got snubbed. Maybe they should have been in the first round and not in the not fourth the round. round. <laughs> but we also, that night, nobody like freaked out on stage or like, I'm just always angry that, or worried that somebody's gonna get angry and like get drunk and like throw a beer and stuff like that. And so I think the biggest issue we had this past uh, year was that there was no food service and like, 
you know, I, I, I sympathize if you thought that there was going to be food there, but I never told anyone that there was going to be food there. <laughs> and it was just funny because I think some somebody, can't, I can't remember if this was an audience member or one of the, like the crew um, had come up and they're like, hey man, is there food? Like, I'm, 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 I've had like five like beers. I need some food. And I just thinking like, well, maybe you should be an adult and not drink five beers <laughs> one in the afternoon. Maybe that's the plan. <laughs> Could be the plan. Mark, yeah, I grew up near Newport News. Five beers at one o'clock in the afternoon is perfectly acceptable. I mean, look, I've I've, I've had worse mornings. <laughs> we did have a running joke with Abby Friel, who is also nominated for the After Show Awards. That if Abby would have won the award, one of us would have ran up there and Kanye West her. That would have been great. Well, I I, I trust y'all with that more than I trust uh, anybody that's you know a competitor in the moment. So. Um, <laughs> But you guys, like the call to action win was awesome, and and I'm I'm when maybe afterwards when I mention um, this this show like tomorrow or something, uh, Joey Moda, one of our photographers, got a great couple shots of me just in the corner, and then you know the call to action representatives there receiving the award, and it was just it was really cool to see how happy everybody was, and you know it was all downhill from there, but. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> Oh, and speaking of great photogs, it's uh, it's it's our buddy Dwayne Burke's birthday today. I think so. it is. Happy birthday, Dwayne yeah. Burke! We love Dwayne. Happy That's birthday. great. It's great. <laughs> One of the hardest working. A lot of birthdays show. recently. Miss Movies just had a birthday. Dwayne's got a birthday. Kelsey had a birthday. Kim Denuzio had a birthday. Who? <laughs> she's not on right now, so you can say that. She'll kick your ass yeah. the time she's here. Yeah. <laughs> Kim's not in the same state as me right now, so I'm, I feel safe. Uh, <laughs> saying that. You feel safe. <laughs> First of all, I gave Kim Denuzio a piggyback ride in New York City, so um, that is true. That has bought me a lifetime of saying anything I want. <laughs> is that going to be the new like like a, a romantic? Horse carriage tour around New York City is having the Billy Belfort piggyback around New York. Basically, yes. <laughs> hey, when Kim DiDuzio comes up to you and says, Can I have a piggyback ride? The answer is yes. <laughs> sure. I think, uh, I think for all that our buddy Edward Harrell has done to set up the Smith as the after party location, I think next year you give Edward Harrell a piggyback ride to the <laughs> That could definitely be a right. That could work. We can, we can make that happen. We can make that happen. Oh, oh the Smith. So oh, many good there. times in that place. A lot, of, a lot of good times in that place. I don't remember all of them, but I remember most of them. <laughs> well, part anybody who's been... not been to a live event yet, if you get the chance to go to the New York live event, be sure to go to Mark Ellis's comedy show the night before and befriend people and then – uh, you you too may have a chance to hang out at the Smith. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's a it, it's a it's it's a good time, and those are one of those nights where it's like it's so much fun, and we're there so late, and you just remind yourself why you got into this business in the first place, and you're high fiving everybody. Then you wake up the next day, and you're like, oh god, I got a show to do. <laughs> you got another show well, to do. Tonight. This past one was like even worse because it, it like cascaded as more and more people showed up. Because Makuga came after we'd yeah. been there for a while. Yeah. And then we were kind of like winding down. And that's when Kate came back. And that like ramped everything back up. So a lot of staggering. A lot of staggering. It was like a really deep basketball team where you just keep running fresh bodies <laughs> into the bar to like put on the full court press. And that, hey, that's what we do, man. When we make it to New York, we're, we are there. All, it's the city that never sleeps, right? Is that New York or is that Vegas? Uh, that's New both. York. It's officially New York. <laughs> okay. All that's right. New York, yeah. And then usually Jake Capcavetta will buy a tray of shots, and that's when the other staggering begins. Uh, not shots. Uh, one and a half <laughs> clean clear pours. pours. Clear pours. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> no I just remember that, that, that photo that Jake tweeted out last uh, I think it was um, I think it was Friday morning um, before the stand-up show. Um during the New York event, and like I think it was like 11 a.m., and he had like two like cases of Budweiser. So he's like ready to go. And I'm just like, oh, this is going to be a fun audience tonight. This is good. That, that sounds. Like oh yeah. 
But that's what you do. I mean, that's that's that that's the guy who I am. Like I remember wanting to be the hero at Makuga's uh, bachelor uh, party <laughs> event in San Diego. We we're right on the beach, and the beer's running a little low, and I'm like, time to be the hero. So I walked down the street, just my bathing suit, nothing else, and I had my two. I got like two cases of Coors Light, and nice. you you feel like white trash he man in that moment. <laughs> I once purchased 14 cases of Natty Light for a party, a snowed in party that's, that we just left the Natty Light in the bed of my truck that was full of snow. That's a 757. Yeah. That was fine. That's, you know what? That reminds me of a great story. So I was at, I was at the Nashville uh, Zanies for a weekend and it was, it was in February and I had like three or four friends, like from like back to like middle school, all came to come see me and they were like from atlanta to ohio and they all kind of converged in nashville and there's a condo that you stay in when you do nashville zanies right across the street and it's pretty big so i just had everybody crash there and it was this like rare snowstorm that nashville hadn't seen in a hundred years the snow was so bad on friday that they canceled both shows but my friends had all gotten in Thursday night. And so we had like a high school college party. I got all the staff from Zanies to come over and we played beer pong like literally all night. And we just kept taking turns because there was a gas station like one street down and it was a little downhill. So we just take turns sledding down to the gas station. <laughs> and I think like by the end of the night, we had like a rope and pulley system rigged up to pull the alcohol. <laughs> It was it, sometimes the weather can really sometimes sometimes weather gives you a wink and says, "Hey, be a moron tonight." Yes, necessity is a mother of invention. You needed to get that beer. And while I'm talking Nashville, obligatory schmo down Nashville. That's what Dylan Camacho from Call to Action has been calling for forever. So, absolutely, <laughs> it's a good town. It's a great town. That hot chicken. Whew. Mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. Oh yeah, it's good stuff. Mm. There was also a question earlier. Somebody, I can't find it now, but real quick, question about when your tickets in Austin are going to go on sale. I want to get that in here before we do. The so my, my update with Austin is it, it, it's it, it's okay news. It's not great news. So the venue I was going to do, I just wanted to do like a little dive bar show, and the venue like tripled the 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 rental price. And they told my booking agency that like last minute, and so we had to scrap doing a doing like a stand up show. In Austin, if I hop on to anything else that's going on at South by Southwest, I'll let you know. But if you're going to be in Austin for South by Southwest, I'm hosting the Rotten Tomatoes Your Opinion Sucks panel on Saturday. That's at the like NBC has like this whole like Peacock House thing set up. And uh, I'm hosting that Saturday night. So that's going to be a lot of fun. I, you might need a bag. I'm not sure I'll figure it out. And I'll make sure on, on social media I'll blast it out. But um, yeah, that's going to be really fun. And then I think this isn't locked in yet. I think I'm going to do the double toasted uh, guys' show. Sunday, they might have a live stream Sunday night, but then after that, on later on Sunday, what I'm thinking about doing since I'm not doing stand up down there is I uh, do just hanging out at a bar and just doing like a, whoever from Schmoville or you know the Action Army, whoever wants to come out, who's around, come on out. We'll have some drinks at a bar. I bumped into uh, Perry Nemiroff at our favorite shake place in a her bank just randomly, <laughs> and she went out by Southwest, and she's like, "Yeah, I'm into that," and so. You know, we could we could have a little fun little reunion down there. Nice, Mark. Yeah. You travel a lot with with doing stand up and all of that stuff, and with the with Schmodown traveling and all of that. Do you have a favorite place that you like to go and visit? Oh man, um, I my Na Nashville is up on the list. Um, Austin's pretty high up there, to be honest with you. Um, if I if I had to go my favorite place of all time, I think underrated is Detroit is uh like it, i say in, in royal oak that's where mark ridley's comic castle is but th that's a really cool area and the fans there are so good um chicago is another one that's really high on my list chicago. and th this is like like of course like like new york's great to go to i've not been back to boston in a minute though so i'm really looking forward to going to boston um because it is a great town i just haven't been there in forever so um but to be honest danny like i'm i'm happy just to do what i do for a living i'll I'll go anywhere to do it. If they buy tickets, I'll I'll go. <laughs> You're talking to a guy who flies to the Middle East regularly to do stand up. So I, you know, if 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 I have to do it, uh, ten miles from Syria on a military base, I will do it because that. First of all, they deserve it, but it feels great to do. I, I I'm I'm hooked. I'm an addict. That's the best crowd too. I mean, I've been in that crowd before. 
yeah. the USO crowds and mm-hmm. downrange, and it's like we they are like you can literally bomb and they will love you anyway for it. Like they are you know. they're, they're so good. And I remember when I first started doing military shows, they were very like whoever booked you was like, Hey, don't talk about religion, don't talk about politics. And I said, When you get over there, if you get them laughing, you can talk about whatever you want. <laughs> Anything. They are cool with it. And what's really funny, uh, is that when you're over there, it doesn't matter who you are, it doesn't matter if you're you know the entertainment and you're not in the military, um, which I'm sure they can tell, is you get, they give you three uh, drink tickets, okay? And the reason why they give you the tickets is you have to, you still have to buy like, like a beer, but you give them your ticket too. And you only get three tickets in any 48 hour period. So you can't have more than three drinks, however, not everyone in the military who gets tickets is drinking that night. And they all are more than willing to line up. So, you know, I'll get up there and the same bartender sees me like 10 times and they're like, are you working here? I'm like, you know, <laughs> make with the good stuff. Oh yeah. Like uh, they, so they do a similar thing when you're in, if you're in the Navy and you go out to sea for more than, um, I think it's like more than 45 days in a row, they do a beer bust and they have beer on the boat that they will bring out. And it's the same thing. You get two tickets and that's all you're allowed to drink. Well, anybody on the boat immediately finds all the under 21 year old people. Cause they're not allowed to drink and takes their tickets. <laughs> mm-hmm. It's a little bit of a Navy rookie hazing there. <laughs> oh yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. <laughs> How are those course lights going down for you, uh, Paul? And Dave? Oh, they're nice doing good. We're done. Almost you together. Mount is still blue. Yeah. <laughs> we did. Oh, were you, did you to I'm Houston? I'm oh, that- sorry. Yes, I was in Houston. I took my mom with me to Houston. Yes. That's right. That's right. Yeah, man. We 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 tied one off there. That was a good time. That well, was actually fun. Should I See, should I come clean, Billy? Should I come clean? Go ahead. About Houston. I had to come clean, Mark. About Houston. Hey, man. I was um. I was definitely drinking heavily that night. I bought tickets to your comedy show. Oh, my show. God. <laughs> this is a legendary story. Yeah. Billy wants to tell. He I ordered, <laughs> let me tell this story. <laughs> Billy, right. Billy wants to embarrass so we're, we're, We get to the Houston live event. First of all, it starts out with, uh, so it, there, there's the two shows. There, well, during the first show, there was the fan meet and greet that the Cine Fanatics and Tim Sim had set up at the bar that was, like, next door to the comedy club. So this is this is the Friday. The Friday, yes. This is the so, myself and Paul and a few other Action Army people, we picked up Andrew Guy at the airport, and then we went to the fan meet and greet. But Guy had tickets to the first show, let's so say we said, first, I'm going to the first, first show. Let me interrupt. First, we went out to lunch and had a couple of tequilas there. We did, the, yes. So, you guys were we already a lot of tequilas there. feeling good. So <laughs> Guy says, I have a big match tomorrow. I'm going to go to the early show and then go to bed. And we're like, cool. All right. right we're going to the late show. We do the fan meet and greet. We have some drinks there. The Nuzo's drinking Jameson and beer and, you know, anything else. Feeling good. So we go over to the show. We get our tickets. Big group. We meet uh, Sadi from uh, Finland Australia, and Australia. 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 You know, we all sit in our group. Denuso orders a drink from the waitress in the comedy store in the in, or in the building, the comedy show auditorium, and then immediately and then has to go to the bathroom. We never see Paul Denuso again in that comedy show. Wow. We missed the reason everybody. why the reason why I, I'll cut it in the reason why is the way to the bathroom. I see Andrew Guy and Rachel Silvestrini, and they grab me and start in the same shots bathroom? With me. <laughs> No, not no, that didn't get to that oh. because the way back. And they grab it, they started throwing tequila shots our way. And I don't even know what happened after that. We end up talking. The next thing I know, the shows are over, and everybody's coming out. I'm like, wait, what just happened? <laughs> oh, and meanwhile, Andrew Guy had a big match the next day, his big match with Ben Bateman. St- was close the bar down. <laughs> I just, I, I love the idea of Paul just like disappearing. It's the most Italian Irish goodbye story I've ever heard. <laughs> Fair. Oh, well, well, Paul was in full on like, like the father of the bride at the at the wedding reception mode that whole weekend. He was like, hey, hey you having a good time? Hey, 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 you need you need a drink? Hey, I got you a drink. Hey, hey, hey how you doing? How you doing, Paulie D? Hey, how you doing? That is very true. Yeah, that was the <laughs> weekend. Like 
<laughs> I gotta make sure everybody's having a good time. The, you know, you did. You missed a lot though at the uh, the Houston after party after the event because <laughs> we went to that little bar that was like forty minutes away from the hotel, and you and oh, the yeah, wangers. Fight broke out. Like, no, I'm not gonna do that. <laughs> One bartender. <laughs> One oh, bartender. Oh. Yeah, that that was that was that night where we realized how far out because I was with the crew, so we had to drop. Um, I was helping them drop all their stuff off back at their hotel, which was like 30 minutes in the other direction from where the bar <laughs> was. <laughs> so, so we're like, okay, well, we could go an hour to and an hour from this bar, or we could walk right to that gas station that I'm looking at with my own eyes, buy a crap ton of beer, and just have a party in our own hotel room. And I do love a good hotel room party. So that was the, uh, the night that you guys found out that uh, Ken Knapsack's internal clock is like, Amazingly accurate. Oh yeah, because yeah, like, I'm gonna go to bed at like 10:15, and then he was like, "Okay, sure." Yeah, and sure enough, at 10:15, he's like, "About that time." <laughs> I mean, I've had my theory that he's a robot for a long time, but yeah, that that proved it. He's just there's an on switch and an off switch, and that's exactly when it happens. Kate Mulligan, uh, the well, you missed a great party that night. You missed Jake Yacovetta getting punched in the mm-hmm. face. Oh man. Kate wants to know how the fries. I'm not sure what that means. I'm sure you do though. <laughs> I do. Hi, Kate Mulligan. How are you? Um, I'm just here on the Chilled Action Show trying to break your all time views record. <laughs> see how close I get. Um, she that, should go on the winners and try to break your Van Halen record. <laughs> hey, if I'm ready to play the game. I was I was rusty and I still got 18 or 19, something like 19, that. 19, 19, yeah. Um, Kate and I, Kate and I, a long time ago, had a very deep conversation that ended up in us agreeing that McDonald's fries are the tastiest. I, I do not disagree with that. I have said that most of my life. Do you know that McDonald's now allows you to have bacon? Like you can put, like, like you can make cheese, cheese bacon fries with McDonald's fries. I I saw that and. Like initially, if you offer me, hey, cheese and bacon with your fries, I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm human, right? But then I started thinking about it. I'm like, there's there, there's some there's some sort of purity about the fact that McDonald's fries, just as is, I've never needed a dipping sauce with McDonald's fries. They just, they go right down the hatch. And so cheese and bacon, that sounds like a Wendy's trick to me. <laughs> That's what I was saying when I heard the news. I'm like, that sounds very Wendy's-ish to me. Yeah, I'll say that Wendy Wendy's fries are fantastic. Yes, they are. Yes, they are. Yes, they are. Once they added that sea salt, changed that the game. It. That was definitely at the sea salt. Um, as as the fattest kid in this group, um, you know, Mark went all like healthy and stuff, and like wanted to live longer or something. I don't know. Hey, um, hey, still fat kid in between the ears where it counts. I'm still a fat kid. And you stole. And you stole. Uh, we can all agree, though, that the absolute worst French fries on the planet are Chick Fil A French fries. They are absolute dog crap. Uh, they are only there to scoop dipping sauces with. They serve <laughs> no other purpose whatsoever. They are dry, crosshatch crap that are awful. Okay. Wow. I. It, it's hard for me to separate that in my brain from how much fun I'm having because I'm eating a waffle. That's a French fry. It's, 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 it's like I'm in Jurassic Park. How do these two things breed? <laughs> Here's the thing, though. I judge French fries by my ability to immediately reach into the bag and just start eating them while I'm driving away. And you can't have a dipping sauce with that. And the first time you do that with a with a Chick-fil-A fry, you don't notice that it's a waffle fry. And you put that cardboard in your mouth, and it's, oh, it's awful. You got to go. You got to go naked. Now, I have, okay, so Jake agrees with Billy. Look, I, I will say this, is that <laughs> in and out Burger, for all its glorious burgers, the fries are atrocious. And they are, I'm saying it right now, they're the worst French fries I've had from a fast food chain, okay? Like in and out fries are not good. They're terrible. And that is why I would Danny, I might say that Whataburger, the, as overall, is better than In-N-Out, and that is my yes. reason why. I was just about to ask that question. Thank you so much, Mark. Yes, round of applause. Is, is Whataburger versus In-N-Out? Yeah, I, I think I'm going Whataburger. <laughs> I'll say this. You're a, you're, you're a 757 guy. We have five guys here. Mm-hmm. Five guys starts out as the best French fries. You Started literally out take the, the, the potato and cut it, and you're like, this is so fresh. And then they dump a salt lick worth of salt 
<laughs> and order their french fries, and that's all you taste. Oh, well, no, the, the, Billy, how they actually make it is they, they have a horse lick a salt lick, and then the horse <laughs> licks the french fries, and that's how you get that, <laughs> that nice grease to it. Um, I believe it. If you go to uh, Five Guys, get the Cajun seasoning on the fries. That oh, yes. is, that's something special. Yeah, oh, yeah. that's good stuff. Y'all, I would just like to to tell everyone this is my dream come true. Whenever I decided to start the show with, with Paul for Till Back, <laughs> this is exactly what I wanted to be talking about was French fries. <laughs> Absolutely. We did it. Continue this. We got you, Danny. Again, we got you. you grew up in Williamsburg. Did you ever venture to like Ocean City, Maryland, or like mm -hmm. that area of the Eastern Shore? Um, and did you discover boardwalk fries and the yeah. joy of eating fries out of a cup? Yeah, in uh, in Patrick Henry Mall, they had yes. a boardwalk fries. Oh, of course. For a second. In Patrick Henry, there was there was the famous Villa Pizza, and then yes. so the movie theater was over here. The movie theater where I saw Batman nineteen eighty nine, where I saw Ninja Turtles in nineteen ninety. A lot of great memories of that movie theater. That's the movie theater where I discovered uh, nachos at a movie theater, and my tummy's never been the same. So. Then over here was Villa Pizza. Then right here was Boardwalk Fries. And it was not uncommon to see young Mark Ellis walking with a slice of Villa Pizza and a cup of Boardwalk Fries heading to Tilt Arcade to go play Lethal Enforcers. Not uncommon. Fantastic. <laughs> yeah, so I'm not exactly sure how to segue out of this fry <laughs> talk that we've been having. <laughs> oh, no segues needed. Sammy, is that, the, uh, is that the schmoes? Uh, is that the Toy Story design? It's my favorite shirt ever. Yes, it is. Nice. nice. That's it's a long yeah. sleeve. I wear it all the damn time. It's faded. It's my favorite shirt. The one that I still like, I, I still have the sweatshirt that is the Schoolhouse Rock one. Nice. That schmoes know. Like like, I'm up here and Christian's down here. And I still, that's still a, a classic when, uh, when I take Molly for walks at night, is I'm like, all right, it's time for Schoolhouse Rock. <laughs> Most of us oh, yeah. do live in Schmodown shirts. You can notice Paul. Paul is wearing his all the belt. Where's the belt? Oh, where, where's the belt? I'm sorry. <laughs> Wrong fandom. <laughs> yeah, we're not an outlaw nation. It's a different yeah. show. <laughs> <laughs> it's a heel watch, Mark Ellis. <laughs> Mark Ellis is a heel. I'm wearing the classic Scott's Tots t shirt. Not Schmodown related. But the cringiest uh, episode of television in the history of television. Man, it truly is. <laughs> what, what episode? What what's he, What show is that? It's The Office when ah. Steve Carell promises all the kids that he'll pay for their college. You know what? Okay, I'm not an Office guy at all. The show just makes me cringe more than laugh. I just can't. Yeah. I, like my my whole existence is set up to avoid ever being in an office. So why would I spend 30 minutes watching it on TV? But. I, I just happened to cast that episode or like one of those episodes. I think it's like a running like series of episodes and it was, again, it's cringy, but it's like, it's a really funny premise. It's a yeah. very funny one. They have a song, they dance. <laughs> yeah, it was pretty, it was pretty fun. <clears throat> but uh, speaking of Schmodown shirts, my parents this year in uh, around November were like, what's that Schmee thing you like? Schmee? <laughs> Schmee <-dum?" laughs> um, do they have like stuff that you can buy? I'm like, yeah, tpublic.com, mom and dad. <laughs> That's how I got some Christmas presents this year with some Schmodo. Oh, good. Shit. Thanks for telling mom and dad about that, not the robot. <laughs> <laughs> Speak of John Roca, there he cut in wow. the here. <laughs> hey, everybody, get the outlaw to 20,000 YouTube subs because. If he gets there, he's going to do something silly and stupid and ridiculous. I'm not sure what it is, but we're going to make him do something. Even if he can do it on the show, we're all going to make John Roca do something ridiculous <laughs> to get 20,000 subs. So prepare yeah. yourself for like that, boy. I got your back, but I'm just telling you, you got to do something stupid. <laughs> we'll come up with something. Maybe we'll help you figure that out. We have a lot well, of we'll things. We'll 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 uh, of in and out fries. <laughs> <Same> <laughs> Sorry, Danny. We're really crushing your segue. I apologize. No, no, it's fine. This is this is what I'm used to. It's totally fine. Paul, Paul, is you got time? Some of this, right? Yeah, yeah. The time now. Okay, we're gonna bring it up. It's now gonna be time for this or that. This is the time where I will give Mark two, three items. He can choose between them. He will expand on them if he'd like. He can put context to them. He doesn't even have to. It's up to him. 
I'm so worried about what question I think I know is coming. If it's this or clean shaven, and I don't know the answer, uh, if it, if the question comes, fair game. I'll see what I come up with, but I'm still deciding how how I like this. Well, maybe I'll I'll save that one for a little later. I'll give me a little extra time to think during the whole. Yeah, 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 yeah. Give me a few warm ups here. Okay, oh, David B. What's up, dude? David B. David B. Oh, oh. Yes, oh David B. David B. God, is that's incredible. I mean, yeah, he did. That's true. That see, it, I I was I listened to it and I'm like, is that Billy on guitar? No, that's got to be David B. <laughs> it's, that's pretty impressive stuff. It's actually uh, the future greatest of guitarist of all time. Miss movies on guitar. <laughs> that's true. She just bought a guitar for herself for her birthday. She, so she texted me uh, which Van Halen song she should learn on guitar, <laughs> and then she sent me a picture of her with an acoustic guitar. And I'm like, first of all, I got a long way to go. <laughs> <laughs> I think, look, Van Halen covered uh, You Really Got Me, and that, you know, da -na 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 -na. so I think she could do that. I, I, I have faith in you as movies. Fair enough. All right, well, we'll start out the first question that we always ask on the specific to this podcast. Uh, we There's only one right answer, although I'm not sure you're going to go with the right answer, but we'll give it to you anyway. Are you team guy or team traitor? One right Ooh. answer. Oh, man. Uh, yeah, you, you kind of give us a little hint in there we did, uh, so. how you're feeling. Um, <laughs> I've seen a lot more of uh, the other guy, not Andrew Guy, um, <laughs> you know, like recently. Uh, again, I'm not allowed to say his name on the show, but I've seen it <laughs> recently. We've had a lot of good uh, interactions, a lot of good chats. Uh, Are you talking about the same person? This doesn't seem possible. Of the show. <laughs> But because I know where my bread is buttered and I don't want this stream to go down, I'll go team guy. All right. Yes. We'll, take it. <laughs> we'll take it any way we can get it. That's our job. That's our job to get rid of team guy. Suck it, baby. <laughs> we love our Bob. We love them, David. But he is I can't, not. Believe, I can't believe I just took the team of the guy who's destroyed more per capita studio <laughs> equipment than anyone else. In you know, yeah. I actually, I segue from that real quick. I did want to ask about that because when uh, on SCN Live, Christian did the Arnold as – as guy during that match, you mentioned that he broke a lot of equipment that you yelled at him all the time for breaking equipment. Does this happen all the time? <laughs> I, I, I I yell at him um, more than I should about breaking equipment. He's only broken like you know three or four things, but um, no, no, he, he doesn't break that much stuff. It's just um, he's it, to be honest, the guy is such an a, a phenomenally quick athlete that I'm worried he can't control it because like he like jumped up on the desk one time, and that was back when I was still hosting Movie Talk. Like like you know, so I had an invested interest in this desk. <laughs> And so he shows up, and it like kind of shifts. I'm like, oh god, what's gonna happen? You know, now I don't, I don't have that same desire to keep that particular desk intact. So <laughs> this would be the scene to jump on the desk. But yeah. now he's, uh, he, he, he really is a, a treat. Both of them are, are are great to work with, and they've been so huge for the league. So I think that they're both great. And on any any given day, I could take either one of them. So they're <laughs> they're both my they're both my guys. Oh, I'll tell you that. Nice. Fair yeah. enough. Okay. Next one is very much right after Alley. David Lee Roth, Sammy Hagar, or even Gary Sharon. I'll throw it in there. It was very nice you to include Mr. Sharon. Um, I am going to take David Lee you Roth. Man, he's only three, though, so it's not going to be sure. <laughs> Well, the one thing about Van Halen when they toured with Gary Sharon is that that was the only time you got that much music from both eras. Um, yes live which is pretty cool seeing like the rest of the band play those songs again but i'm gonna go roth but hagar is really really close for me so i think that independently either one either era would still be my favorite band of all time i think they're both that powerful yeah. but I'll, I'll take roth by a little bit i love that you mentioned that about Gary because that was actually one of my favorite tours for exactly that reason he had all the the old stuff the new stuff and it was a great concert i think gary sharon is underrated but that's just me i do too and extreme's a great band yeah, that's that's one of my favorite bands i ever saw live they like Great three. They did the three sides for every story tour. Uh, it's good stuff. It's good stuff, uh, man. Nuno, it's great. Van Court. Coming out on the new album soon, I suppose. But we'll keep it. Sorry, everyone else. But this is what Paul and I do. At, at the, <laughs> we'll get our beer. We just park ourselves in a corner. Start talking music. <laughs> yeah, when, when you're done, we're just going to talk 1991 uh, Washington Redskins in my corner up here. We can do uh, that. I mean, we we're going to diagram fire. the counter tray one time. and uh, <laughs> Ricky Irvin's Ernie, one-two punch. It was great. Oh, yeah. 
<laughs> okay, what do we got now? We got, uh, would you rather, did you like playing or do you like being on the desk more? Um, uh, I like being on the desk. I, I didn't, I wouldn't, I don't think I always would have said that answer, but it really is fun. It's like one of the most fun things that, that I do is getting to announce those matches just because it, it's so much fun to do. It's so much fun to occasionally pepper in a, a little joke or a one-liner or, you know, have to make a call on something or have to, you know, write the ship if there's a challenge or whatever it is. I, I like being in control of that kind of chaos. It's a lot of fun. But, you know, sometimes you wake up and, and, and you just want to – you just want to – just go in and compete and then leave. Like the free for all is a lot of fun because you just show up, you compete, oh, you'll last a couple rounds and then you're out and you're done. Fair Mark, right. I do have a quick question about that. Do you know all of the rules by heart? Like, can you just say it? You don't have to say, I don't mean here, but like, like whenever you're announcing the rules, <laughs> oh, the rules. I was going to say, because we're, we're currently putting together a book and I'm like, oh, I don't know those rules, but. Uh, <laughs> No, and all, all, all series, yeah, I, I do know. I do know the rules, and that's that's not like a prompter or like written on the thing. That just comes from nice. Perfect. I mean, nice. I can I can do it now if you want, but no, it's, no, 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 it's only fun. <laughs> almost want to. Maybe we'll save it for the end, maybe. <laughs> but anyway. you know, yeah, yeah, let me get, let me get the monkeys up here working on it. Yeah. It's my goal for the end of the year is to know all of the rules to just say it verbatim. So I'm working on it. <laughs> okay, here, wait. Okay, th then let's do this here, Danny. Give me give me a round and I'll give you the rules right now. Round three. Round three. Each team is going to give us a series of numbers. These numbers can range from one to 20. Each number corresponds to a different corner of movie, trivia, showdown, know-how. Your first question is worth two points. Your next three, your last one, should we make that far? It's worth five big points. Because this is a team format, the two-pointer will be answered by one team member. You may not collaborate with your teammate for two or three-point questions. Only the five-point questions allow collaboration. The opposite team member will then answer the three-pointer. Overtime is sudden death. <laughs> My whole <laughs> we have no idea if that was right or not because none of us have memorized the I'll rules. I'll believe it. I got it. My whole heart, uh, Mark, you just made my heart sing. So that, that, <laughs> thank you. That was for Danny, and that was for her mom. Thanks. Oh, there you Do go. you have a favorite match that you've announced and a favorite match that you competed it in? Competed. In? Um, favorite match. Every match that I competed in, win or lose, was so much fun. Um. My favorite match that I competed in, I think it was probably the Merle match because for two reasons. One, it's just, it's fun pushing that guy to the five point question. Like if you're in the, if you're competing against Dan Merle and you make him answer, you make him get out of bed to answer the five point question, <laughs> you did something good. And also because I was dressed as Santa Claus and I just kept cracking <laughs> these jokes. I haven't watched the match to this day, so I have no idea if any of those jokes made it, but I was killing in the studio with the Santa Claus jokes. So that made me happy. But the other one that's close is when I beat Sam Levine, not because he's such a great competitor too, but it's because at the end, um, Molly came on the desk and gave me a kiss and we still have that that moment immortalized in the studio somewhere. So that's, oh, that's pretty oh, special. Oh, oh. That's and then as far as like announcing a match, oh man, there's been so many, there's been so many great ones. Um, I, I always go back to the Knapsack Witwer one, um, the Iron Man match. Um, but if I was to go something a little more recent, hey, what? We, 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 we taped a few on Saturday that were a lot of fun for very different reasons, but they were fun and they're coming up soon. And you may know it when you see it. I think I do a pretty good job of like, you know, being even keel for every match, but um, there's, sometimes you get a little loopy late in the day and you just have that match that's just like a fun match and it just, and it rolls. And I think we had one of those this past Saturday. So keep your eyes open. Very cool. You know, while we're in that Bye. subject, I'm gonna go ask you real quick. How about the Guy Merrill match? That's one of my favorite matches to watch, obviously. Yeah, that was that was incredible. Um, it was a little nerve wracking for a couple minutes there when uh, when Christian went to the dead zone. <laughs> it was, you know what? I I felt like uh, one of the other pilots in at the end of Top Gun when Maverick just like <laughs> and it's like, hey, the guy's Maverick. I don't think he's coming back. <laughs> But exactly. we got him back, and it all worked out, and look at where we are now. So all's well that ends well. Fair enough. Okay. All right. Back to this or that. Here we go. This is actually. Uh, I just want to say real quick. 
my favorite moment of Mark in the Schmodown ever is not announcing or competing. It's when Makuga did the keg stand and you come sliding in and, and pump the keg for him. That's the greatest thing ever. And that's it. That's <laughs> I, yes. I do remember him planning on doing that. And I was like, hey, man, there's only one guy that I would trust to hold you. And it's this guy. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Back to this or that. Call to action is one we do a lot. Uh, this is specifically for us. So we have big time chat about this all the time. Poutine or loaded fries? Mm, as much as I love all of my Canadian brethren, I can't wait to get back up there soon. I'm going to go with just good old fashioned 757 loaded fries. There you go. Brilliant. That's the way it should be. Some of our dis I think loaded fries are winning, right? Starting, I think they're definitely they're starting to win. I'll go back and agree that whatever potato product is currently in front of me is what I'm going to choose. Well, you know, I'm not saying I won't eat protein. I'm just saying that. If I I I here now. <laughs> That's a fat guy thing, though. We're going to eat the potato. I mean, I said that I hate uh, Chick-fil-A french fries, but I'm going to eat the whole bag. It's still going to happen. <laughs> Fair enough. Okay. In an alternate universe now, where Corey's life does not exist, an alternate uh, Mark Broccoli Florence Ellis has to choose between Bud Light and Michelob Light. <laughs> Which would you choose? Uh, is that Michelob Light or Michelob Ultra? Michelob Light, we'll say. Because they're no lights. Well, you can make it either. Yeah. We Okay, so fun fact about the West Coast. Anyway, we don't have Michelob Light out here. We just have we just have Mick Ultra. Oh, okay. Michelob Light was the first beer in college that I was like, oh, I can drink this. Like, like it, it was... Because, you know, beer, when, when you start out, like, having a beer, it's like, oh, man, I really got to play through this. I, I did not enjoy it when I first started drinking. And Nicola Light was the first one that was, like, really smooth. So I'll, I, I'll drink Bud Light. I will drink uh, Nicola Light. But if I took one, I think for me it probably goes Coors Light, Miller Light, uh, Nicola Light, and then Bud Light. But they're right here. My sister drinks Nick Ultra. So when I'm back visiting her, usually it's just a, it's a Nick Ultra fest, which I'm fine with. So. Perfect. I mean, as, as long as it's cold, like it, to to Billy's point about whatever is here right now, whatever beer is the coldest, that's one I'm drinking. That's fair enough too. <laughs> hey, we, John, even Natty uh, Ice. <laughs> yeah. You know, you can learn how to keep things cold on beer. We the Wangers taught us. You taught us on the Wanger Show how to keep beer cold. Hey, look, if if I need to put ice cubes in it, I certainly will. <laughs> I'm not afraid to do that trick. <laughs> there you go. As Makuga's old man calls it, but he it's he calls it a Florida beer. In <laughs> <laughs> fact, does not lower the alcohol content, so you're good. <laughs> no, it, 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 it's all eventually getting in here one way or another. It's all going to eventually make my dreams come true. <laughs> That's true. Okay, uh, how about the Schmobot or a gaping chest wound? <laughs> Is the chest wound life threatening? <laughs> There, I'll say not not life threatening. If it's not life threatening, I'll take the chest wound all day. <laughs> Fair enough. All day, and and you know the real sad part about that, Paul, is that if I had a gaping chest wound and I did a Kickstarter to heal Mark Ellis, the Schmobot would still make more money than the Kickstarter would. <laughs> Oh <laughs> right. <laughs> you need to heal Mark or say schwang on SEM Live. Which one do you want to do? <laughs> That's how I we do it. Heard the dude now, so I got to get into this so we can see what's going on. It is. They got changed the name. They changed the voice because there was a starting to the girl is futzing out somehow, so they're crackling and stuff. So the guy is a little bit better supposedly. But do they ever think that the female voice just got tired of saying schwang over and over? And over? <laughs> <laughs> it could be. The girl is tired of schwang. <laughs> The phrasing on that one, but I'll, I'll go back. <laughs> the girl is tired of schlong. Um, yeah. So we got, how about, how about Baby Yoda or Babu Freak? Oh, man. I, 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 I like a lot of what Babu Freak brings to the table. I did too. I think I'm going to go, I'll go Baby Yoda because of the force ability mm. and like, it, here's the thing is that like if either one of these are my pets and they're living under my roof i trust baby yoda to not like try to rewire the tv <laughs> you know or like to get into trouble or like like get into the snacks or something like that babu frick you're gonna wake up the next day and it's like it's, it's like you're a parent and you went on a trip and you came back and your high school kids had a party that's what babu frick does to your apartment so i'm taking baby yoda yeah 
not a bad point. The other possibility would be though he'd be a nice fix it person to have it and then grow. But it's, I think probably there's arguments to be had both ways. I, I love Bobby Frick. <laughs> Me too. Okay. How about the Tetris suit or your orange carrot suit? Um, you mean Josh McCuga's orange suit that I saw? <laughs> <laughs> I I think I'm gonna go with the Tetris suit. Uh, no, I'm sorry. The I think I'm gonna, gonna go the orange suit. I like the orange suit. The Tetris suit is great, but the orange suit it's more like it's probably more likely to get me beat up in a bar somewhere in the future. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, the Tetris suit um, is great too. But I think that the orange one's just a little more me. Just a little more me. Hey, Bubba. That's on the it's on the baby carrots brand. That is definitely very nice to see you come out in the orange suit. Oh, <laughs> our view just doubled. We got a little model. This we is did beautiful. it. Oh. 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 So adorable. Oh. Hi, oh. honey. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, there there you why we wanted to bring Mark Ellis on was just so we can hang out with Molly. <laughs> Yeah, if, if the question is Babu Frick, Baby Yoda, or this little nugget, I'm taking this little nugget. I think we all will take that little all nugget. The time. <laughs> so if, if, if Kate Mulligan is still watching, I'm keeping Molly on camera until we pass your view total. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever it takes. So it's like Captain America says. <laughs> oh. That's hilarious. <laughs> oh, such a sweet dog. Okay, but we're done. <laughs> That's what that's what he's saving for the uh, the wild card. Next Danny week. is uh, she's she's a few miles that way. <laughs> she's an acquaintance. <laughs> yeah, but see, here's the thing about Molly's mom. She can turn on the Molly signal at any time, like the bad signal. <laughs> 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 Molly knows where to go and stay. <laughs> that's very sweet. Smart puppy. Smart puppy. Oh. All right, a few more we can go with. Here's one I'm kind of curious about: George Carlin or Richard Pryor? Mm, um, yeah, I can't go wrong either way. I think, I think I'd give the slight edge from my personal taste to Pryor. Just, I think I'm a little more in awe of the stuff that he talked about and the the honesty that he brought to it. Because Carlin was such a genius with with you know commentary about our society and he was such a wordsmith um it's it's hard to pick either one but i'm gonna just slightly go prior that Fair one enough. that question is even closer than the roth hagar question <laughs> I agree. With prior carlin more than i do i agree yeah, actually carlin is my favorite of all time but so i will give this slight edge that way but i can't disagree so uh, carlin was in uh jane silent bob strike back so i'll go with carlin that's true <laughs> he was very, he was very dog too. dogma too that's right mm -hmm. uh okay we got a couple billy actually throwing in here bush gardens or water country usa <laughs> it's a great question um I'm gonna go Bush Gardens because there's less pee that you're swimming in. <laughs> but What's the, the, wave, horn? the wave pool at uh, uh, Water Country was epic, and Rampage is awesome. And oh, I am looking forward to taking my niece and my nephews to Water Country uh, when I go back home sometime soon. So, like that and Bush Gardens, like Bush Gardens. I mean, you have. The classic of classic roller coasters, the Loch Ness Monster. You have the Big Bad Wolf. You have a couple of great water rides there too, so you can get soaked if you really want to. And Bush Gardens, the food, you, you can get a lot of good eating done at Bush Gardens. Yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> Another one from Billy. And actually, this is one I was happy he sent me. Mark Rippin or Doug Williams? Great question. Uh, both Super Bowl MVPs. Uh, Rippon was the MVP of the league that season in 91. I'm going to take Doug Williams. That was my first sports hero. And to this day, just so many lessons about football, about sports, about life, about culture. That guy, I can never thank that guy enough. I wrote him a letter when I was like seven years old. And he was like, he had been injured. And, and he wrote me back and I got a signed picture from Doug Williams. So. Wow! Yeah, yeah. That Super Bowl, Super Bowl twenty two is a very, very special game. You talk about being able to just like rattle off the schmodown rules. I can rattle off the entire second quarter announcement. <laughs> <laughs> it was Al Michael, Frank Gifford, and Dan Dietorf, and I could literally go for beta. Thirty five like, unanswered points by the Washington Redskins in mm -hmm. quarter number two, the ambush right. in Pasadena. 
Yes. <laughs> Definitely known as the court. It was in San Diego, Billy. San Diego. San Diego. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Pasadena was 17, and that's the uh, that's that Super Bowl right there. So. Oh, that's a good one. That's a good one. Yeah. That actually leads me to a quick, quick sub question there. As a big Redskins fan, is there any like player that you really are fond of that was not a not a, not a well known player, that second string player that only a fan of the Redskins would really know? Um, okay. there, there, there's a couple guys I think should be even like Hall of Fame considerations <laughs> that, that aren't. Uh, one was primarily a kick returner, but he was like a third down back and really a specialist. Uh, the Swiss Brian, Army, Mitchell. Brian Mitchell was his name. Mm-hmm. And Brian Mitchell is an all-time great. And Art Monk is in the Hall of Fame as a wide receiver. And I think that Gary Clark was a great, oh, great guy right. out that uh, you always had to keep your eye on a game plan against. So, And then anybody on the offensive line who is unsung or not in the Hall of Fame deserves to be. Like, I think Russ Grimm finally got in. Joe Jacoby should be in. Yes. Uh, yes. Jacoby, Jacoby, for Jacoby is in. Yeah. Is Jacoby I think in? Jacoby's in now. Oh. Jacoby. It, it, if Joe Jacoby's in, then that's justice. Then he's he was uh, yeah. he's an all-time great. <laughs> that's why. And I yes, that. I know your follow-up question is yes. I am currently single. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. I'm a big Chicago Bears fan. I'll start telling you about Tom Waddle from a couple years ago. And he was we never any big. <laughs> Waddle still covers. About, he still does the radio. I don't care about smelling salts. Waddle. That's where I found out what smelling salts were as a kid. With Waddle. every game, Waddle. he got knocked out. Every game. <laughs> <laughs> but he caught the ball. They get knocked out, but he always caught the ball. So I That's right. Tommy yeah. Waddle. Back. As a Redskins fan, uh, sports. Over white cloth. Thank you as much as I did until he made that interception to clinch uh, the Super Bowl. <laughs> <That's hilarious. Yeah. laughs> Martin May, he got burned so many times, but yeah, then he would no. make up May. at the end of the game to save it. <laughs> May he was big when it counted. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Well, again, actually, Kate and I talked about that too. Kate was a t- Tommy Waddle. It's a good it Chicago name, too. You know, Tommy Waddle. Tommy yeah. Waddle. <laughs> but, this, this is why I bring Paul on because Paul is the yin to my yang. And when there is something that I know absolutely nothing about, Paul can pick up my slack. We, we can talk about the Dallas Cowboys and how much they're terrible if you want, Danny. <laughs> <laughs> We don't have to talk about the Dallas Cowboys or the Houston Astros right now. It's totally fine. I'll, I'll be all right. Oh, we already talked about the Astros. We covered oh. that. Oh. <laughs> I do feel bad for the Astros fans because, like, it's not like the fans were sending right. signals in. The, the fans would have to sit there and, like, listen to all this crap. Like, it's, I feel bad for the Houston Astros. It, it, it's a great fan base. And I feel I'm, I'm bummed for y'all. So my grandma, my grandma is 95 years old. She has watched every single Astros game that has ever been on air. She has always been an Astros fan. My family is an Astros family, all of that good stuff. So this this year has been a little tough. A little tough. <laughs> a little tough well, fan right now. <laughs> look, the good news is that if grandma's 95, she she's seen a lot of cheating in, in her in her day. And <laughs> it's probably not the worst cheating scandal in sports she's ever witnessed. So it's all gonna be okay. Baseball. They're keeping the rings. <laughs> They're keeping the rings, Grant. Right, we got, we got them. That's true. Well, speaking of sports scandals, we can always ask John Roca about the 1918 Chicago White Chicago Black Sox scandal. That's going to be one of our questions there. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, let's get your back to this and that. Well, I have a few more left. Two more left. Chili's or TGI Fridays? Um, if you asked me this five years ago, I'd definitely say Chili's. Um, I think I'm going TGI Fridays now. Like the last few times I've eaten at Chili's, it's it, it's like they just dumped salt on it, and it's like guys, relax with the salt. And they tried to kill Mark Riley, so <laughs> I'm gonna go TGI Fridays. Okay. Josh Makuka will never stop being upset about the fact that Mark Riley ruined Chili's for them <laughs> because he got sick and almost died. <laughs> we, we were talking about it the other night. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on a few different text chains where a lot of that stuff comes up way too often, and uh, it's, it's a good one. So somebody should reference that in their uh, wedding reception speech, and uh, it probably is going to be Makuga. Fair enough. Okay. Uh, okay, I got two more. I'll go with. How about or three more rather? John Belushi or Chris Farley? Wow, it's another tough one. Um, as much as I love Belushi and all the movies and sketches he was in. I think Chris Farley, there, there's a chance that's like the most pure, genuine, funny human to ever walk. So I think I'm going to go Farley. I can't 
can't yeah. argue there. Those are all like, you, you really can't argue either way. But Farley, there's just there's just like a pure innocence about you know him just even the story. I don't know if you guys saw it on um, David Spade show. He had Jim Carrey on, and Jim Carrey told a story about one time Chris Farley came over to Jim Carrey's house, and you know within ten minutes of being in his house, all these kids just showed up, and Farley was like leading a parade and like like jumping in the pool, and like it was. <laughs> It's just like he's just such a pure, genuine. There's not enough of those kind of people. Fair enough. Fair That's enough. Very sweet. Uh, BB8. This movie's had a question for Dio. In the, uh, she wanted to know if you if oh. you respond or lurk in those text oh. chains. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm always lurking whenever it's a text. I I look at any text. Incoming text message is a professional invitation to lurk, and then. <laughs> If I feel like responding, I will in my own time, but it's not an immediate situation. You know, I'm still just old school enough to where if there's something that is immediately pressing, then you have my number, you can call me. Otherwise, a text is like, hey, when you feel like talking about this, feel free to respond. So I take my sweet time. Okay. Two more BB 8 or DO? I'm good, BB 8. BB 8. I'm pre pretty big on 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 BB-8. I was initially worried that BB-8 was going to steal R2's thunder, and to some degree, uh, BB-8 did in the first couple of movies. But seeing seeing R2 and Luke Skywalker re get their connection, then R2 once again the most clutch droid in the galaxy came to play when he needed to the most at the end of Rise of Skywalker. So happy to see that. Me too. I think I fell in love with BB-8 at the end of Last Jedi when Poe gets back from whatever mission. And he lands towards the end of the movie. He says, "Where is my droid?" And BB-8 rolls up, and I'm like, "That's Molly. That's that's Molly." Yeah, I there for you. Yeah. Okay. And the question: This is what specifically for me and you, Queen plus Paul Rogers singing "Feel Like Making Love," or Queen plus Paul Rogers doing "Shooting Star." Mm. I "Shooting Star" is my favorite Bad Company song. But there's nothing like having Queen as your background band in a live arena playing that feel like making love that. I will take that. And this movies, if you're still watching, that's a song you should get on guitar. Feel like making love, simple power chords. You can crush that. Definitely. This movie has got to do that. Cut to the next, this year's uh, Schmodown Spectacular. Miss Movies plays the national anthem on guitar. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but David B. Miss Movies, like the dueling solos, maybe? What? Yeah. That'd be pretty cool. Right? <laughs> yeah. With, yeah. Uh, we went to Christian Hall of Fame for national anthem competition at the beginning of the Schmodown Spectacular. We're off the crowd a little bit. I like it. I like it a lot. Yeah. Miss Movies, or if you're, if you're still listening, you should get on that. Paul, I like how you said uh, this one's just like personal for me and you, as opposed to the previous uh, uh, classic rock question or any of the Star Wars questions that you were asking about. Bob, yeah. Bob, what? <laughs> those are all for the world. That's true. Yeah. All for the world. <laughs> my second, my time. There you go. Yes, the queen, the queen <laughs> question it. is not for the world. You know, only the most popular, one of the most popular rock bands of all time. <laughs> Fair enough. Nobody's it's interested. And I, I do give Polly D uh, credit for turning me because I didn't know that they did uh, bad company songs or uh, free songs when Paul Rogers was playing with them. But the magic of YouTube, that's that, that's one of the conversations we had at the Smith that I remember. He's like, dude, you got to see this stuff. So uh, finally I was on the road and I did it. And I think I DM Paul and I was like, you were right. This is this, this ass. <laughs> <That's absolutely laughs> it, was, it was great. So I there, was, there was one night at the Smith. I think it was the the Manhattan show last year and it was like there was like the uh the classic rock corner because it was like Mariano, Haskell, Benito, <laughs> Ellis, like <laughs> it's just one of those things, snippets of like uh Hagar, uh <laughs> Lee Roth, uh uh Scorpions, uh <laughs> That's, I, I blame I blame uh, Haskell 420 for that all day long because like he'll he'll bring me some sort of like iconic rock relic like hey this is the the US Festival from '83 and I'm like hasn't Indiana Jones been searching for this for like 50 years and, like, <laughs> comedy show? and it just spawns these incredible conversations so it's it's hard to get us to shut up about that stuff. It is hard to get going on it. So in my parents' basement, I found uh, George Carlin vinyl. You know, right. not classic rock, but George Car George Carlin was pretty sweet for me. 
Oh, very nice. Oh, that's that's, call me when it's Richard Pryor. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> They're both great. I, I used to, it used to be the uh, Cosby one they had on vinyl. That's not we don't use that one anymore though. Nope. Yeah, no, nope. nope. That's seven age well. Nope. Mm. Nope. Y'all, that is it for this or that. So you know what that means. This or that is over. So if we did not get to any of your questions that were in the chat, please make sure that you resend them now. So we can make sure that we get to it because we're transitioning over to the question asking of the, uh, for the chat. So thank you so much. Cores. Wow. Okay. Here we go. But it's, it's bold stuff. Of course, it can get you loopy. <laughs> Especially when you're, when you're 4'11 or whatever. Yeah, so they used to have white claw. This is the, <laughs> from the mountains of the Rockies. It's all water. It's all water. But, Mark, I do want to ask you some questions that came in from the Facebook page. If you have not liked our Facebook page, please make sure that you do that. If you have not subscribed to our channel, please make sure that you subscribe to the channel. We are definitely trying to get call to action to 1,000 subscribers. We are almost there. We're so close. Thank you to everyone who has been in the chat tonight. This definitely has been one of the most active chats that we have ever had for Chill to Action. So Mark, thank you so much for that. Thank you to everyone who is in the chat right now. But I do want to transition this over to a couple of questions that we got from the Facebook page. There you go. So first up, we have Jeremiah Morris, General Jeremiah Morris, asking Mark, "Do you think you've made it, or what to you does that mean?" Also, why are you so nice? <laughs> there's there's no good way to answer that question. Like, <laughs> so nice I've made it, and um, I. Honestly, I, I I do feel like I'm where I want to be. If that makes sense. Like I don't really look at there isn't this like you know kind of pie in the sky opportunity that I'm really looking for that I'm searching for. It's like I just want to keep this momentum going. So I think like in in air travel terms, I've I've reached my cruising altitude, and I just want to be up here as long as I possibly can. And the reason why I'm such a nice guy is because eventually I'm going to ask everybody I was nice to for favors and <laughs> they're going to feel really bad if they don't do it. So this is just a nice little life lesson to you kids is be nice now because then when you get older and you don't have a family to support you, all those people that you're nice to, they're going to come back and they're going to put you in the retirement home. That's why I'm such a nice guy. That is exactly why I make sure to give my nieces and nephews money every year for their birthday. <laughs> oh, you you got to keep the nieces and the nephews into like in the loop because look, you know, I might be the first guy that does like a GoFundMe to get me into a retirement community. <laughs> I think I'd be hitting the right stride with the fandom right when I want them to get into that that sort of lifestyle. So everybody start putting the pennies in your piggy bank because Uncle Mark's going to come calling. <laughs> Yeah. Another question well, 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 from donations next week or for Mark's retirement. <laughs> <laughs> yes, make sure that you put that in the Schmobot, please and thank you. Another question from a call to action member, our sweet baby, my twin, Danny Coast. How exciting was it to film your own comedy special? What places have you toured for stand up and where would you like to go? Uh, the comedy special was awesome to get to do it. That night was a lot of stress, which we actually uh, have the full documentary that uh, Christian Rubel-Cobb is directing. Um, we did a bunch of behind the scenes interviews and there's some like additional footage that we put in there. That's gonna be on my Patreon and on my YouTube channel as early as this week. So I'm, I'm really excited about that. Um, and so you kind of get to see like a look into what it's like to tape a comedy special, how the sausage is made because it ain't pretty. Um, <laughs> It would be really fun to start like going abroad more often and going to you know places like Australia, going to Europe to tour and do stand up. So that's that's kind of what I'm what I'm looking to do next. Very cool. That's awesome. I would love to see you go abroad. So another question from another Action General, Mike Deacon. Yeah. I, don't, I don't necessarily know what this means, but I'm going to ask it anyway. Um, how difficult is it dealing with Kanji Club? Am I saying that? <laughs> Kanja Club. <laughs> it oh really is not that difficult for me now that I'm five years removed from it. <laughs> Initially, when that dude showed up in The Force Awakens that looked like me, like that weekend was just so overwhelming because when it happens initially in your head, you're like, oh, this is always, this is what life is now. This is, it's <laughs> never going away. Like it's never, <laughs> ever ending. And then I just started to feel really bad for Brian Burnell, the actor. Who, right. 
played that guy. So yeah, Danny, there's this guy in Force Awakens that apparently, oh, and I, I don't remember this, but apparently at the premiere of Force Awakens, um, there was like a ripple through the crowd when that guy shows up in our section because everybody's like, that guy looks like, some people thought I was in the movie. And I I, I I just in the movie. And afterwards, Christian's like, yeah, you didn't hear that? Everybody was like, oh, that's it. <laughs> so, yeah. I, but know, no. I know what you're going through, Mark. Uh, when, when Twister came out and uh, Phil Seymour Hoffman as uh, Dusty. Yeah, this guy right here. Right there. Yeah. I don't get to it all, but he's dreaming. Okay. Okay. Oh, wow. We that's still got one last great Van Halen Hagar tune out of that movie. That is that's it. Great. Great. <laughs> Another that's question from our Facebook page from Joseph Boros. Is there anyone from your youth who has had the most impact on you on your current personality? Um, I don't think like the ones that I always sing the praises of the most are, you know, the guys like Jim Carrey and Eddie Murphy. I think probably on my actual personality is David Letterman. I think is the most like that has influenced the <laughs> the style of humor that I have. Um and by the way, I, I love watching uh, Days of Samaro's show on, um, I think it's on Showtime. I and love Days of Samaro so much, yes. They're so good together. And they had Letterman on. Oh. And it was so funny watching Letterman come out and just kind of riff with them. It was just, it was such a treat to see that. So, yeah, I think Letterman's pretty high in my book. That's very nice. I like that you're into Days of Samaro. That makes me feel very cool. So oh, yeah. uh, another question from our Facebook page from Anonymous, someone who wishes to remain anonymous. Um, talk Hi, about Mulligan. No. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, it's not. But uh, talk about your co your contributions involvement with the uh, MTF questions department. And do you do you have to motivate yourself to get to the gym? <laughs> <laughs> that's eventually you get to the point where you're like, you need to have a trainer because that's the only way you're showing up. So that's where I'm at. <laughs> like it is very hard to get there. Once I get there, I can like get warmed up. But like this morning it was, it was rough getting there. Then you get there and it's like, there's other people there and you know, you're like, okay, I'm awake. I'm enough. I can get through this. Um, as, as far as the, the, the Shmodown questions go, um, I'm not nearly as involved as I used to be, which is, a godsend for people like uh you know to have people who are just great great fans like great human beings like uh uh chris galiski and pj campbell and then they head up a great team of writers um that we've had uh they're fantastic and the one thing i say is like yeah the writers do all that so my involvement is i might pitch in here and there when i can especially if we have like a big event coming up um but more than anything it's before the matches looking at everything to make sure that, you know, everything's in order and kind of giving it a, another set of eyes to look on. And then also looking at any like wording question that a question that like isn't worded. And the one that I didn't do that with is the one that came back to bite me in the ass. I don't think it affected the outcome of the match, but there was a question in Kate and Brett, uh, sorry, Kate's boy, uh, Brett was going up against um, uh, Bonnie Hi. and Bonnie. it was like, it, like I think it was like super bad, and it was like yeah. the yeah. seven teens. And the way that I read it, it sounded like it was the 2017 movie yeah. and yeah. not 2007 teens movie. So that's not the writer's fault. It's just because they're not thinking in the way of like the broadcast all the time. So that's my job, and that was one that I dropped the ball on. So mm. it'll probably happen again. But yeah. it's, it's funny because that that brings up something um, that I think a lot of people don't necessarily realize is that when we're playing at home and we get the question along the bottom. You get to see them, yeah. The customer, they're the customers. The, the contestants don't see those. Mm -hmm. All they do is, is whatever you hear, like whatever you say, like, you know, they're not reading yeah. the question with right. you. Yeah, and, and that's the thing too. It's like sometimes um, if there's like, if somebody said like a funny line or something, like we'll, we'll go ahead and re-ask the question, even not – Forcing anyone to use a JT will just because you want to make sure that they hear it. And that's probably the only reason that I broadcast is that, that I get to do as many matches as I do is because my voice is so loud that I can, I can kind of project across the room. So that, because they don't even have like the headphones on up there. So there, it's just like it's a spatial thing. And there's sometimes a lot of moving parts to it. So um, just getting the voice loud enough to where they can hear it, it's a, it's a crucial part of the show. 
Okay. Fair enough. Okay. That's fair. So that is all of the questions that we have from the Facebook page. Y'all make sure that you like and subscribe to that Facebook page, to our channel, all of that good stuff. If you want your questions read here on Chill to Action, that's all that I have for now. So before we move on, please make sure that you in the chat get your questions in right now so we can ask Mark. But before we go, I would just like to make sure that we plug everything that we need to plug. So Paul, what's coming up on the show? Uh, that's right, Chilled Action, we have the next two weeks scheduled. Next week, we're going to have the wonderful Winston Marshall on Drip Drip. Yeah. Yeah. Drip Drip. <laughs> that should be a fun one. And, of course, the week after that is the episode that a lot of people have definitely been asking for. It's a long time in the making. The outlaw, John Roca, will be finally coming. It's finally coming to Chilled Action. Yes. Even those same Redskins questions you gave me. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely well. Well, <laughs> we will do. Yes, one hundred percent. Billy, do you got anything uh, to plug for us today, babe? Uh, I will be uh, tweeting uh, on the Twitter. Not, you know, don't want to brag. Been doing it. Um, <laughs> but yeah, uh, at Mr. Billy Belford. So uh, you know, just follow me. You know, I uh, tweet lots of uh, food things and Redskins stuff, just like this show. So you know. <laughs> Are you are, are you in you're not in Newport News, are you? No, I'm in Virginia Beach. Okay, that's right. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah Bob Beach. That's where like I used to do the joke, like Williamsburg, we drive to Virginia Beach to use the internet back in the day. <laughs> <laughs> I mean you're not, like, plug not in your in three hours disc and then head on back before dark. <laughs> <laughs> There's people in Suffolk who still do that, so <laughs> <laughs> And all of y'all know where to find me. You can find me on Twitter at Danny Joy, D A N I E E J O Y. You can find me here every Monday on Till the Action with my wonderful co host, Mr. Paul Denuzio. All that good stuff. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe for that second date. You know how it goes, y'all. Thank you so much. Get your questions in right now so we can ask Mark. I'm going to let Paul take over. Let's do this. I will. I should also mention one more thing. I should plug the Schmobates is happening this Wednesday with a big, a big match between match. is it Brandon the Hot Man Hannah going up against Frank number Frankie Numbers Janish with special guest moderator Kevin the Smasher Smets. Wait! Ooh, wow. <laughs> wow. So that should be has, fun. Uh, does, does has Smets competed in Schmobates before? No. Not yet. Not, Not yet. yet. No. Yeah, I was, I was, I was talking to Paul earlier, and I was like, "Hey, are, are we going to do any schmobates on this?" Just because, like, I would get my ass handed to me in any sort of schmobate, just because <laughs> I think, I think it, it's like a little like on purpose that I need to keep it a little, I, I need to keep it a little bit away from me too, so I can be, you know, the fair and impartial judge and jury, sometimes executioner that to be for the show. But I would love to like be a a judge on schmobates at some point. So yeah, you know, anybody ever drops out. Hit me up. We will let Alex know. Alex Mack on the best sure there. Alex right now is once she wakes up from her seizure she's having right now that you want to be on the probates. <laughs> She'll be uh, sure to get in touch with her. Really excited for it. Shout out to Alex Mack doing a wonderful job with Schmobates. That's one of our favorite shows to watch, and we're so appreciative that everyone has been super accepting of that show and enjoys that show. Alex does a great fucking job. Watch Schmobates, y'all. Mm -hmm. You guys are like, you guys are such a cool collection of people that I think eventually, if like there's ever like an argument at the actual Schmodown studio between us, we're going to be like, hey, we need to be more like the call to the action. <laughs> <laughs> we need a Schmodown. Need to be more like call to action. Okay. Mm -hmm. all get along and they're a good team and they don't step on each other. That's how you do a broadcast. Timestamp this, Paul. Timestamp it. Let's try. Jake, time do where we're at. <laughs> All right, let's get to these questions. Doug Castle, if you were to do your own version of Laughapalooza, who would you want on it, alive or dead? Ooh, it'd probably be a lot of dead people. Um, I'd probably go, uh, I'd, I'd want to watch Sam Kinison in person. I'd, I'd want to watch a lot, of, a lot of real old school comics, yeah. I, I think uh, some people that you've never heard of. Um, there's a legendary comic that used to come around the comedy store, still alive. Uh, James Painter would be one. Um, may he rest in peace. Brody Stevens would definitely probably oh, be yeah. the first MC of it. So uh, it, that would be, that kind of goes back to the old resident question. Like who are the ones that maybe aren't in the hall of fame that you really loved? And like, there's so many great comics that, uh, that have come and gone that I'm, you know, have been or, or and dear personal friends with. And that's the kind of laugh of clues I put together. That's a good one, okay. 
Uh, let's see. Brandon Hanna says he doesn't want to ask this question again that we blew it. So, okay, hot man. That's okay. Um, <laughs> sorry, Brandon. We run a show. We run a ship here, Brandon. I'm sorry. <laughs> Saw. I like that reference. <laughs> Watch, so if Mark has any advice for soon debut rookie IG player asking for a him. <laughs> um, my best advice is as much as I love uh, being on Chill to Action, uh, turn off the show and start watching those movies <laughs> right now and take copious amounts of notes because that's the only way to get through with the inner geekdom. Watch All the right, movie. It's not going to watch itself. <laughs> Sit true. down. And think about which Star Wars movie or which Hobbit movie you hate the most and watch that one. Because that's the question that's coming. That's right. That's okay. Uh, Jillian. We love a Jillian here. Hey, Mark, when are you performing? Hey, Jillian. Good to see you again. Uh, I'm going to get down to the OC soon. There's a cool uh, newer comedy club down there called The Rec Room that I love going down to and uh, working on new material. So sometimes I'll headline and other times I'll just pop in randomly. So I will keep you posted and I'll probably do a big show maybe at the rec room. Actually, it's probably a good idea um, during Star Wars celebration. So if there's nothing closer to, cause it's about 15 minutes away from, um, from the convention center. So I might do a big show down there around that. Excellent. All right. Uh, let's see. Is there no super chat <laughs> option here? Yes, Andrew, there is no super chat cause we don't have a thousand subscribers yet. So if anybody can subscribe, that'll help. <laughs> Oh, is that how you do the super chat? Yeah, I have a thousand subscribers. If you're watching this for the first time, for subscribe to the channel. Throw up a sub. Get up a super chat. <laughs> Thank you, Mark. Yeah. I, I, again, let's pump money into this factory so that in 30 years, when it's time for me to go on the golf course and retire, they can send it right back to this guy. That's <laughs> yeah, what we would do. Absolutely. Yeah, Red Wing Golf Club in Virginia Beach, Virginia. <laughs> Let's be honest. We're all living in a huge loft in 30 years together. This is, <laughs> you're looking at the retirement home right Pretty here. Much. As long it's as the cold light is blowing. Smith. <laughs> oh, <Dr. Smith. laughs> we, we have like a we have like movie trivia showdowns every Friday, but nobody can remember if the questions are right or not. <laughs> That's gonna happen. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> You would need to you would need to give him like ten JTE rules. Like who? <laughs> which movie? Which? JTE which? back in the day. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, General Anthony Nugent wants to know was an ETA on the Aussie comedy tour, which was talked about a few times. Yeah, hopefully soon, Anthony. You're a, you're you're a great fan, and there's a lot of uh, awesome uh, Australian fans that I want to come and say hi to in person. So. Hopefully I can make it happen sooner rather than later. There's a lot of, uh, you know, things to take care of before you launch a tour like that, but it, it will happen um, sooner rather than later. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's see. I think some of the questions might have disappeared, so hopefully I didn't skip anything. Let's see here. But Brandon Hanna is going to ask it. Vanilla sweet cream cold brew or 7-Eleven blueberry coffee? Um, vanilla sweet cream cold brew, which is what I got for Brandon the other day. <laughs> <laughs> Mm. <laughs> Look, at the end of the day, the job is to wake me up, and I like cold beverages more than hot beverages, so I will go with Brandon's disgusting uh, <laughs> triple diabetes shake or whatever the hell we <laughs> go get from me today. Because look, when you're in Brandon Hannon's company, you're just his gopher, okay? <laughs> you are around the hit, man. You just are there to do his bidding, and whatever he demands and snaps his fingers, you got to go do. I yes, learned on the that. Action Podcast, I'm so sorry. We do not refer to him as a hitman. We only refer to him as the hot man. So. Jake gets upset if we call him anything but okay, hot well, man. Okay, well, look, I'll tell you this right now. I'm not calling Brandon the hot man. <laughs> <laughs> That's never going to happen. But Jake actually was really happy about that. That was actually I will a the man to be named later a Starbucks beverage anytime he needs. <laughs> Have you heard the story of the hot man? I've that would be the, Jake Yacometa. The one typo that Jake Yacometa made in a chat one time. And it's oh, never, that's it's never lived it down. Never lived it down. <laughs> Finally, it gives me something else to rib Jake about other than the Panthers. So. There you go. Oh, oh, we it in, in Orlando. <laughs> <laughs> General oh. Fellas Mathada, also from the Action Army, who is your favorite oh. Schmodown competitor? Uh, I, I can't. I don't have. I honestly don't have a favorite one. Andrew um, guy. <laughs> I, I can tell you who's not my favorite. <laughs> um, 
Spilling tea. I I didn't say who who was my favorite. <laughs> I, I I like them all equally. I, I really do. Like do they they all have their qualities. So you're asking my favorite all time Schmodown competitor. I will simply say Bonnie Somerville. <laughs> she did show up. That's fair for <laughs> making it <laughs> into the studio. <laughs> That's half the battle. Will McLean, acting in the series question, best basketball player ever at Wake. It's Tim been, a lot of great ones. been a lot of great ones, Will. The answer is not Tim Duncan, although he is an all-time great. Uh, the answer is Randolph Childress. He is the best basketball player to ever grace the court at Lawrence Jewel Memorial Coliseum. Randolph Childress, my favorite basketball player of all time, too. He's uh, look, look up his highlights uh, both here and then he played overseas for a long time. Just an electric point guard range to burn. He was like Steph Curry before Steph Curry. He could pull up from half court and knock it down. He was just that leader that Wake Forest needed at that time. We were always the underdog, and he never thought he was the underdog. To see a guy on my little squad to have that confidence, that makes you believe you can do anything. Perfect. Uh, there is- he was also there forever. He felt like he was there for like – Six years. He had a couple of injury seasons or where I think he got the red shirt too. So he was he was around for a while. He was the Ed Coda of Wake Forest, only better. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. That's a good pull. <laughs> Alex Shashak, there you go. What would you want to see argued on Schwill Bates? Any specific questions you think might be a good Schwill Bates question? Ooh. Um I like questions that uh that revolve around like the entrances. So it maybe if it's like, is there something that's not just as general as like what's the best entrance but maybe like um the most surprising entrance or uh, to do something with uh do something with entrances right like or yeah um that's a good question Alex. i'll get back to you she'll be waiting She'll wait your DM for I, that. I have one. another question. Yeah, right in there. And Kevin Smith wants to challenge you for Schmo Bates, pretty much. So you know. Wait, you, 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 you want to have a judging contest? <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you want to see who can who can pound the gavel better? <laughs> <laughs> well, he's a I have another list of that real quick, real quick what? for you, Mark. The Bonnie versus Brett match or the Tom Dagnino versus R and B match? Bonnie versus Brett all day. <laughs> all day. <laughs> Bonnie versus Brett, the, compared to Dagnino and Burnett, they those two knuckleheads make Bonnie and Brett look like the Deep Blue computer and Gary Kasparov, who were playing <laughs> against each other. Fair enough on that one. Oh, man. Right, how do you prepare every new startup show, and how do you come up with new jokes without using the old ones from Pardis Jesse Dasson? Uh, it's, that's, that's the life. So you just sometimes you just write freeform, and you just try to – get all the, you know, cobwebs out of your head and see if anything funny comes out. And other times, um, for me, it's, where's my joke? I have my book around here somewhere. Um, I, I just like, nobody can read except me, not because I won't show anybody, but because you can't read my handwriting. It's that bad. (laughs) No, literally no one can read it. No one can. No one has the ability to read it. Um, Should have been a doctor. (laughs) Literally, literally. That's right. There's just like, the, you just like try to come up with like a structure in your head as far as like what you're going to be trying that night, what new stuff you're going to be working on. So that's really uh, what it is. But you, you get into a groove with it and it just it's it's fun. Perfect. OK, a uh, good music question. I'm going to want to hear the answer to David B. wants the other than Eddie Van Halen, your other favorite guitarist. Maybe see a top three. Mm, my other favorite guitar players. Um and why are they Brian May? Sorry. Come on, uh, Ames. Come on, Brian, Ames. Brian May is way up there. Um, I'm a big uh, I'm a big slash guy. Um, mm-hmm. I am a big <laughs> Alex Lifeson guy. I really like oh, the yeah. way he plays, the guy from Rush. Um, oh, man, there's there's I like Joe Satriani a lot. I like Eric Johnson a lot. Um, and then you have like your all time, you know, like Hendrix's and Santana's and, and guys like that Clapton. So, um, I was the Eagles documentary again the other night. Love both Feller and Walsh are fantastic. So it's a lot of, there's a lot of people competing for second place to answer the question. I don't disagree. Uh, your two most anticipated films of 2020. 
um, Top Gun 2 and the second time I see Top Gun 2. Nice. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> but Perfect. Kong versus Godzilla is going to be pretty cool. Um, because it's Nolan, Tenet is now way up there. Um, and see. Oh, yeah. Um, I, I got to see the Wangers new movie before anybody else has, which is their sequel to the Uber Driver one. And uh, it, it's great. And uh, Time Stamp, RB3's movie. Oh, I don't if you want to watch the Wangers movie, we're on their Patreon right now. It's available to Patreons. Right. Oh, Have really? you ever heard of the, like, what is RB3's podcast? What is it? First Cut, the meaning of? What is the first cut? Has, <laughs> does anyone know what the first cut is? Oh, well, well, if you want to know more, make sure you subscribe to the meaning <laughs> of and yeah. for the first cut. I, I can't, I get them confused all the time. <laughs> Also, apparently, you might see Ma or hear Molly or see Molly in a uh, episode of the first cut or in an upcoming of episode of the meaning of Molly did make a cameo appearance. That's right. Yeah, Molly's just she's here for the views. She's here for the subs. <laughs> That's what it does. Kevin Smith. She have an right Instagram now. yet that we can follow? Not <laughs> Molly, I mean. No, that's, I'm not gonna. She, she's not gonna get her own Instagram because then I lose all my followers. You gotta follow me. <laughs> How about dogs at the Schmodown calendar? You gotta know Molly, Leia, Snickers. I mean, that could be a good seller. Right I don't now. hate that idea at all. That'd be great. That's a good one. As Molly, as long as Molly gets December, because I want her in Christmas garb. Perfect. Aww. Harry did a Collider Pets thing one time. I think we need to re rebring that, bring that back out. I remember that. Yeah, Dewey was the star of it, deservedly so. Shockingly. Yeah, <laughs> well, bring back that Kevin comment if you can, please. Sure. Kevin Spatz has no interest in facing Frankie numbers, so he opted for guest hosting instead. That's why he wants to face you, I think. Ah, okay. Yeah, I don't think anybody wants to play Frankie numbers in Schmovate. So <laughs> when you play, when you whoever you play, Spatz, I'll I'll judge that one. There you go. Perfect. I think this is a question from Kate. Brandon Hanna or Kevin Smith, Sophie's choice. <laughs> um, I'm not going to do Sophie's choice with them. I'll do The Good Son with them. You know the movie The Good Son? Yes. Where <laughs> Dan and Mom is oh, holding on, and she's got to drop one. And I'd probably end up dropping them both. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Wow. Okay. Fair enough. Also, uh, I love them both so much. I couldn't stand to save one, because every time I looked at that one, I'd be thinking about the other one that I lost. Sure, you imagine, sure. Can you imagine how sad it would be if I'm just like, I'm folding all these hoodies that used to be worn <laughs> by I have all these pair of gloves that would never be worn. It'd just be a uh, tragedy, heartbreak. Perfect, perfect. <sighs> Upcoming Star Wars player, Sean Sullivan. The song Jedi Rocks, love it or hate it. <laughs> Um, love is a very strong word, but <laughs> it is uh, a more no, accurate word right. than hate. So, I, it, look, if it's called Jedi Rocks, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna side with the. I'm gonna, I'm gonna be on Team Love here, Sean. Okay, all right. Uh, Justin Hamilton, what's better? I believe after working out, a juice box or a Coors Light. That's a better juice box after a after a long night at. Oh, wait, wait, what's better, Juice Box or Coors Light? I, that, I believe that's the question. So it's kind of weird and a little strange, but it's better. Juice Box um, after a long night or Coors Light? Oh, wait, Juice Box after a long night or Coors Light after working out? Okay. Yeah, I got to go Coors Light after working out because the Juice Box after the long night is a Coors Light. So <laughs> okay. I'm going to say it's a Coors Light after working out. Yeah. Speaking of uh, Schmobates, I think you should you should uh, judge the Harloff versus Silvestrini Schmobates that's in the works. <laughs> that's the one. That's what you should go for. Um, I, maybe I'll make a rule where I don't I don't judge a Schmobates where either competitor has my number. <laughs> <laughs> that would be a good idea. I think Christian would definitely <laughs> have to. That might be the way to go for, for future Schmobates. <laughs> keep working in those text strings. <laughs> Jack D. Manheim, what person would be the first person to throw a legitimate punch in this road out? John Roca, right? Um, I don't think it's going to be Roca, no. No? I think, I, I think it's going to be somebody, because Roca has enough of a military and athletic background to know he can do real damage with the punch. So I think the first person to throw a punch is probably going to be their first punch they've ever thrown. Mm. And it's like, just like come out of left field and like you don't expect it, so... There's any number. Robert Parker. It's gonna be Robert Parker. Chandru, maybe. It, hey, 
you know what? I've I've seen matches that have not made it to air yet, and you have no idea what's about to happen. Oh boy, <laughs> that's a nice tease there. That's a good tease. Peggy Goobin, what movie makes so you cry? Watch every movie, guys. But cannot include sports or a dog. What movie makes me cry that does not include sports or a dog? Oh, that takes away Brian's song. Okay, it takes uh, away a lot of them. It takes away Air Bud. Um, well, it's kind of about sports, but there there used to be this Applebee's commercial where the coach just retired, and uh, <laughs> there he did Applebee's, and the coach just hung up the whistle, and the waitress comes by and says, "Hey, coach, can you help me with something?" He's like, "Yeah, yeah, I'm the coach. I'm a, I'm a coach. <laughs> sure." And he gets up there, and what does she need help with? Hanging up the frame picture that says "Forever Our Coach." I remember. Oh, that. No. what a! <laughs> and you know that, like in my head, kind of the backstory is like that coach was asked to leave because there was some sort of scandal that they. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Miss Movies oh. asked Young Guns Two or Young Guns Two. <laughs> it's it, it's a, I, that's Sophie's choice. I can't. I can't pick one. <laughs> Uh, let's see. Okay. Uh, uh, are, are you actually working on uh, Young Guns Three Old Guns with PJ Campbell, or is that not happening? Or what's what's? Do we get an update? I'm the wrong guy to write it. I'm the right guy to make um, a really bad cameo in the movie, where I'm like staring right into the barrel of the camera during an extra <laughs> scene. That's always been my fear of like like somebody who like knows I like Star Wars. <laughs> Asked me to be in a Star Wars movie, and I'm just in the background, like, and that's why they put you in a stormtrooper helmet, and you can't tell that you're doing that. Yeah, I'm the guy running in and knocking his head on the Death Star. Yes. <laughs> but you kept going. Why on you? Yeah. Uh, of course, in your we already did give Dwayne a birthday shout out, but we will do so again just for you, Eric, because you Happy birthday, Dwayne. Myth Dwayne. and Myth and Dwayne. But dude, that, that guy, I don't even know he's at the comedy show. And he'll have photos that he sends me afterward. I'm like, where were you? It's it, that guy is insanely talented. Yes, absolutely. And there he is. He also runs around like a like crazy the whole time. He, yeah, your army crawls through to get the, the perfect shot through like spectacular. He's like on the floor. And perfect. He's got a he's got a great question too. Is a sword or side of green sword or getting the autograph on missile? Um, Taking on a grab of a missile, kind of, it, it still kind of feels weird that like I signed a missile. So, you didn't just sign a missile. You I'm, put your Twitter on the missile. Twitter handle and shark teeth and the Van Halen logo. Um, I, I think the sword is pretty cool. It's when I gave me his old uh, Marine sword, and that's that's pretty cool. So getting to have that because I know he's stabbed a crack ton of people. <laughs> It's a sword or a bayonet. <laughs> it, it's 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 a it's a big knife. It's a okay. knife. Knife. It's just not okay. Richard Eric Jarvie, my Estonian brother from another mother. You're not a big book guy, but if you had to pick a number one favorite book, what would it be? It's um, that Washington Redskins book behind him. No. <laughs> one right here. You got a good one on Tiger Woods. Um I would say Animal Farm by George Orwell is my favorite book. There you go. Is it because it's so short? <laughs> well, I like Animal Farm for two reasons. One, I think that it, it, it's the way that Orwell is able to frame um, communist Russia and Marxism and socialism within the framework of a farm is genius. And I also like that it has talking animals. Nice. Awesome. So, that. in the long-standing tradition of me pulling out a book from my bookshelf for the Chill to Action podcast, I will bring out "What's My Name, Fool" by Dave Zirin, which is a great book uh, on Muhammad Ali, who I am a very big fan of. So, there we go. Thank you, Mark, for allowing me to to continue this tradition. You always find yeah, it Animal Farm. <laughs> I don't have it? Animal Farm. I don't. I'm sorry, but Animal I Farm is great. But there's there's this Muhammad Ali documentary where they have like all this old talk show footage that he was on that kind of frames his entire career. That's I think it's on Showtime right now. It's fantastic. Yeah. With the with the uh, one what Bob what's the the talk show host who always had him on? Um, oh, what is Dick I Cavett. can't remember his name. Yeah, Nick Cavett. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. Kay Morgan headlining at the Improv or opening at the Comedy Store. <laughs> um, I'll take the headlining gig. 
<laughs> I love the comedy store. Comedy store is my favorite place, but I, the, the challenge I have lining is something that is is never lost to me how cool it is. <laughs> okay. Um, I did have one other down or placement question. There, no, that just skipped a bunch. Hold on. Uh, Neurochronic, I just had it said, want to know what your favorite promo has been. <laughs> of the one that he the one that he cut for the like the season one going into this season, like the new era promo, was so epic. That was the one where like, because usually I'm just backstage like doing whatever before, until I get announced to go on stage. But like that was one where like, I kind of wanted to like be close to the fans so I could get their like genuine reaction watching it. It was that good. But they're like, there isn't a bad, there's not a bad promo that guy's done. They're all fantastic. It's <laughs> dude's incredible. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, the yeah. one he did for corruption wasn't that great. <laughs> Before that season seven promo, a long time ago, I made a joke with Eric about how I needed um, a quick intro because I'm a single lady inside of this world. So I like to like, how do I introduce Schmo down to people who I'm dating? So I do feel like that that promo was a, a very helpful tool for me to introduce that. So it, it's a much easier gateway than it's like, no, so there's this guy that they call a carrot, right? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. He wears a lot of basketball jerseys, yeah. and yeah, that's you're, you're doing it right, Dan. Yeah, thank you, Eric. I did skip a good question, then unfortunately it got lost, but I'll ask it from Chris Adams anyway. Chris Adams of Cinefanatics, we love the Cinefanatics. Wants to know how long until we get Dog Stepfather to Molly Boogaloo? <laughs> <laughs> that's a top contender for the new special title, right there. That's good. Uh, working on it. We'll get back to you soon. About. 35 minutes into the new one. So, well, TBD. Sweet. Sweet. Kevin Smith wants you to know he actually auditioned for The Good Son when he was a kid. So, good reference and good pullback on that. <laughs> but, I, I, I can't wait to hear which kid. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I think that is, oh, well, Chris Adams wants to know why Return of the Jedi is the best Star Wars movie. So, I had to. We, we did it. We won. <laughs> we, we accomplished the mission. We've we've been struggling against these these pricks for three movies, and and we did it. <laughs> we, we it then they built our one. We blew that one up too. So we won. Like we, it's we, we we can finally relax and celebrate. That's that's why it's my favorite. And just Luke just doing this, and R two getting the lightsaber ready. It's just ugh, wow. chill, chill. That's so good. What a great segue, Mark. That's it. We did it. We did it. We did it, y'all. Thank you so much to everyone who is hanging out with us inside of the chat. We genuinely appreciate you. This is definitely one of the most amount of people that we've had inside of the chat. Thank you for having a party there. We genuinely appreciate it. Um, so before we head out, Mark Ellis, is there anything that you that you would like us to plug for you? Um, you guys, some of y'all know where you can find me online and all that good stuff. I do have a YouTube channel, Mark Ellis Live, or I think it's just Mark Ellis. And then uh, my Patreon is Mark Ellis Live. I put new stand up up and uh, all that kind of things. And then you can get uh, tickets to my upcoming shows at markellislive.net. And uh, like I said, we got Atlanta in a couple weeks, uh, and then Las Vegas, uh, Ken Knapsack, Josh Bakuga, possibly. John Kaiser going to be doing stand up at that show. And then maybe another special guest is going to be there too. Um, so stay tuned to that one. Vegas is one you want to get tickets for. And then I have Denver coming up. And if I don't know how many of y'all are going to be in LA for the free for all, but I'm doing like a big theater show in Hollywood the night before that, where a lot of showdown personality is going to be. So all the, and those tickets, I wanted those to be cheap because y'all like, it's hard enough to fly out here and like go to a showdown and all that stuff. So I think they're like 10 or 15 bucks. So uh, grab tickets to that Friday night. We'll all hang out and have a big party. <laughs> what about uh, Atlantic City? That's coming up. Something. Yeah, Atlantic City's in June. Yeah, tickets are going on sale. I think later this week for that. So that's um, that's going to be really really fun. Nice, Mark Ellis. Be- once again, thank you so much for hanging out with us on the Chill to Action Show, on the Call to Action, on the Call to Action Network. Thank you so much to everyone. Big, huge, special shout out to my sweet girl Kelsey Kirkland for dark yeah. this whole episode y'all the only reason why some of your comments and questions got in was because kelsey was holding it down in the chats so make sure that you send a big shout out to her big shout out to everyone inside of the chat once again we love you we thank you next week you can find us here on this channel 
on Monday at 10 15 Central Time. With Mr. Central Time. With Mr. John Roca. Don't listen to Billy anymore. With Mr. John Roca coming on the Call to Action podcast. Y'all, if you do not understand our history with John Roca and the show. Not next week. Next week's Winston. Is that right? Yeah, two weeks from now is Roca. Thank you. Four is late. <laughs> it's good stuff. <laughs> Minor racers that can be. <laughs> it is it's like, it is, it's like yeah. Ellis on the last match on a on a late Sunday evening. Uh. This, is, this is how we do it on the Chill to Action show. So once again, y'all, thank you so much for hanging out with us inside of the chat. Please make sure that you tune in next week. You know where to find us. You know where we are. Uh, once again, this is a call to action show. We have been an action army podcast since day one so make sure that you like comment subscribe everything for this channel and make sure that you follow the action guys ben bateman andrew guy always love always salute to everyone that's in there there we go there it is this is where we started. this is where we came from thank you all so much for hanging out with us late on this monday night we love you we appreciate you and as always we salute you we'll end on that comment right there good night everybody